Well, um, this is something which um, quite a lot of Java books don't bother to mention. Um, it's a little bit surprising as well, but um, um, here it is anyway. Um, we know that um, uh, classes have got a class hierarchy, and um, at the top of the hierarchy is objects. And we know that um, interfaces um, uh, don't have the same sort of hierarchy in that they don't have anything that sits right at the top. Well, that's the um, um, official position anyway, but um, unofficially there is, because um, it turns out that um, any interface which um, has got no super interface um, implicitly has got uh, members matching every public method in objects unless it explicitly overrides them. Okay, so it's just as if um, it's as if the compiler had come along and um, and uh, made a, a, an interface uh, consisting of um, all of the um, all of the public methods in object, just making them as abstract, of course. And um, any interface which is at the top of the tree is made to inherit from that. That's what it looks like. I'm not sure that it's done that way. In fact, I don't think it is done that way by the compiler, but I think it could be. And it certainly behaves as though that was the case. Now, if you take a look at this example, it will show you what can happen. Here we've uh, uh, got uh, class W extending I, and I just got uh, this single method in it. And uh, obviously, you can call that method, that's no problem. And uh, that will end up being called, of course, because that implements it. And uh, if you try something like w.check, it won't work, it'll give a compiler error because check is not in W. And that's perfectly correct. If you try w.toString though, it works. And it works because um, a toString is in object. So it implicitly uh, gets that method available to it. Um, and uh, that's because essentially, essentially this has all been done as a bit of a hack really. But um, um, essentially, um, Whatever W is, it is certainly an object because you can't do a new on an interface, only on an object. So, whatever W gets set to, it must be an object. So, you're always guaranteed because W has got to be at least an object that you can execute object methods on it. Now, um, because as an interface you can't include all the methods out of objects only those which are public because all the um, methods in an interface are, are abstract and public so because they're public um, whatever you pull out of there has got to be just the public methods and uh, that's basically the reasoning behind it if you take a look at the source code that gets generated, though, you find that something strange is going on because um, although something like that call to test is doing it via something called invoke interface, you find that call to string is doing it by a different method. It's, it's doing um, invoke virtual as an instruction. So there's a different technique of calls taking place. So this whole thing is a bit of a hack, I think. Um, right, uh, I think that's about it. Um, just one last thing to mention that I think I've mentioned before. If you've got a class that indirectly in implements an interface, you can still put it in explicitly if you want to. It doesn't have any effect on the resulting code. Um, so, for example, if you if this um, class W extended some other class and that class implemented an interface. You could put that interface that it implements just down in there. In there. You wouldn't have to modify any of this. Uh, sometimes that's useful because if you're if you're trying to work out whether some class implements an interface, it can be a bit awkward if you've got to look at that class, look at what it extends, go to the thing, class it extends, and 
check if that implements the interface and if it doesn't you go to the class that that extends and so on all the way up to check I mean that can be a bit tedious so sometimes it's better if you just put it in other times you're just stuffing so many interfaces into here it gets confusing nice. you can do it or not as it however you please I think 